In the age of the Old Republic, 7,000 years before the Battle of Yavin, the Jedi Order suffered a second great schism in which some embraced the dark side of the Force, eventually leading to the Hundred Year Darkness, a civil war for control of the organization. Defeated by their light side enemies, the surviving Dark Jedi left Republic's space and found Korriban, homeworld to the native Sith species, an aggressive warlike people with a strict caste system, which made them ideal subjects for the newly arrived Force users. In time, the rogue Jedi intermixed with the Sith species and expanded their influence by conquering nearby worlds, forming the powerful Sith Empire hidden away from the rest of the galaxy. For 2,000 years, the Sith Empire thrived, experiencing a golden age under the Dark Lord Marka Ragnos from 5100 BBY until his death a century later. Yet it was during the height of their power that seeds of doom were planted, as two competing factions emerged with diverging views on the future of their civilization. Seeking to continue the policies of Marka Ragnos, the Sith Lord Ludo Kresh and his followers wanted to preserve their prosperous empire as it was, while their rivals led by Naga Sadao sought to expand and conquer new enemies. Clashing at the Dark Lord's funeral, their duel for power was interrupted by the spirit of Marka Ragnos, who explained their history as rebel Jedi before warning that the fate of the Empire rested on the path they followed. When the spirit departed, Ludo Kresh attempted to make peace, but Naga Sadao refused, unwilling to relent in his pursuit of power. Yet as they argued over the future of the Sith, a ship of unknown origin suddenly appeared in the sky and landed nearby. Born in the core worlds of the Republic, the siblings, Gav and Jory Darrigan, were trained as Jedi in their youth, but abandoned the Order to seek riches of their own. Falling on hard times, they accrued large debts and briefly lost their ship before stealing it back and fleeing into unknown space. Seeking to open a lucrative new trade route, they approached the first planet they found, landing on Korriban during the funeral of Marka Ragnos. Arresting the trespassers, Ludo Kresh advocated for their immediate execution, while Naga Sadao wanted them interrogated so their knowledge could be used to invade the Republic. Though the Sith Council sided with Kresh, Naga Sadao refused to accept defeat and broke the prisoners free while staging it as an attack from the Republic, even killing his former master Simus to leave no witnesses. Feigning surprise and outrage at the next Council meeting, Sadao convinced a majority to unite under his leadership and destroy the Republic before they struck again. In order to deal with Ludo Kresh and his faction, which refused to participate in the invasion, Sadao tricked them into attacking his decoy headquarters on Kar Delba before crushing their forces with a secret fleet hidden on the moon of Kar Shi'ar, where his true base was located. Although Ludo survived, his armies were vastly depleted, and so eventually went into hiding, leaving his rival as the undisputed Dark Lord of the Sith. Keeping his human prisoners separated, Sadao sensed a great deal of force potential in Gav Daragon and so trained him as a Sith apprentice, while his sister Jory was sent back to the Republic during the Battle of Cardelba with a tracking device attached to her vessel. His enemies crushed and the full might of the Empire behind him, Naga Sadao brought forth the entirety of their strength against the Republic, leaving much of Sith space relatively undefended. Using the tracking information from Jory's ship, Sadao led the Sith fleet to the Republic, overseeing the invasion from his meditation sphere in the Primus Galud system, where he used Sith sorcery to project large-scale illusions, showing their forces as ten times larger than reality. Using the Koros Trunk Line hyperspace route, the Empire attacked the Koros, Kaikilius, Metelos, Basilisk, and Shokin systems, as well as the Forost shipyards, while the Sith Lord Shard Khan, a fervent supporter of Sadao, was charged with the invasion of the capital Coruscant. Meanwhile, Jory Darrigan made it back to her homeworld of Koros Major, where she warned their ruler, Empress Teta, about the approaching Sith invasion. As it so happened, the ruler's Jedi advisor had a vision about the Sith, and so their forces were already prepared for war. However, the rest of the Republic ignored their warnings, and as a result suffered brutal, overwhelming attacks. Placed in command of the invasion fleet attacking his home system, Gav Darragon used the opportunity to search for his sister on Koros Major, leading to a confrontation which ultimately turned him against his master. Abandoning the dark side, Gav flew a ship to Sadao's meditation sphere and opened fire, distracting him long enough for the Republic to discover much of the enemy fleet was an illusion. 
bolstered by this revelation. The Jedi on Coruscant led a counterattack and repelled the invasion, while Republic reinforcements arrived from Anaxis to chase the Sith from all occupied worlds. Pulling back to Primus Galud, the Sith were on the verge of defeat, and so Sadao caused a supernova to destroy both fleets along with his former apprentice, who was left to die in the Meditation Sphere. Making a final act of contrition, Gav warned the Republic fleet under Empress Teta to leave before the explosion, giving them the coordinates to the Sith homeworld of Korriban. Returning to Imperial space with what remained of their forces, Naga Sadao suffered yet another catastrophe as Ludo Kresh waited with a fleet at his back, declaring himself the new Dark Lord as Sadao failed and brought them to ruin. After another brutal battle in which Sadao lost many more ships, he finally succeeded in killing his old adversary, but this momentary triumph was quickly overshadowed by the arriving Republic forces led by Empress Teta seeking the utter destruction of the Sith. Accepting defeat, Naga Sadao fled with a single ship and a small army of Masasi warriors, establishing a secret base on Yavin 4, where he continued to study Sith sorcery and alchemy, experimenting on his Masasi slaves. Refusing to surrender, acting Dark Lord Shar Dakan took command of their forces, ordering devastating suicide attacks, which halted the Republic's advance for a time. Having remained neutral throughout the conflict between Kresh and Sadao, and not participated in the Great Hyperspace War, the powerful Sith Lord Vitiate of Nathema, previously known as a Scholar, saw opportunity in the unfortunate state of the Empire. With the Dark Lord in exile, their forces crushed, and worlds falling to the Republic, he gathered remaining Sith Lords on Nathema, convincing them to perform a ritual, claiming it would unleash the true power of the Dark Side against their enemies. Channeling his immense power, Vitiate absorbed the force energy of everything on the planet, including the 8,000 Sith Lords helping him perform the ritual. When it was over, every living thing on the planet was dead, while Vitiate was immortal with nearly godlike powers. Easily the most powerful Dark Lord remaining, Vitiate traveled to Korriban, where he gathered as many remaining Sith and their servants as possible, before leading a great 20-year exodus into the Unknown Regions, ending on Drom and Kos, where they established the reconstituted Sith Empire, promising to one day take revenge against the Jedi and Republic. A special thanks to all those who contribute to Civilization X, like Sir Willem the Dawn Treader, Kristen Greeneyes of the Company of the Cat, Tamika the Black Wolf, and Tom Moonstruck Waters. If you'd like to help the channel, be sure to give a like, leave a comment, subscribe, and click on the links below, or else go to patreon.com slash civilizationx, where you can gain early access to videos, vote on future content, and watch the Patreon-only series, Heroes of Lore and Legend.